the Lord Jesus for his mercy and for his grace. We praise the name of the Lord for this evening. We bless the name of the Lord Jesus for the journey of this week so far because by his mercy he has kept us. By his mercy he has provided for us and for the opportunity to meet again, to share in the word of God, to learn at Jesus' feet. I pray that as we are sharing and learning tonight the lord himself will plant his word firmly in our hearts in the mighty name of jesus and he will enable us to be doers and not just hearers of his word in the mighty name of jesus Amen. let us pray father in the name of jesus Amen. our father and our god we give you all the glory we honor and worship you we praise your name because indeed you are good we thank you because truly you are a kind god Thank you for all that you have given to us. Thank you for all that you have done for us. Thank you for another opportunity to hear you. Father, we do not take it for granted. Be thou exalted, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Our Father and our God, we pray for forgiveness of sins. We pray, O Lord, by your mercy that our sins will be forgiven tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Lord Jesus, we pray that you will give us new beginnings in the name of Jesus. Amen. And as we look into your word, Jesus, we pray that you will speak to us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. O bread of life, we pray that you will fill us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, Lord, we pray that your word will have a place, a special place in our hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our Heavenly Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. We give God glory. We give you glory, Lord. As we honor you, we give you glory, Lord. As we honor you, you are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy. like you no one else can touch my heart as you do i could search through all eternity lord and find there is none like you i pray that the word of god as the bible describes it the two-edged sword that has the ability to pierce through the soul we touch our hearts and souls tonight in the mighty name of jesus we will not hear this in vain but the lord god will minister to us and change our lives for good in jesus mighty name amen, amen. amen. we are moving ahead we are continuing on the topic that we have been sharing for the past six weeks this is the sixth session of this series following god's plan for our lives following god's plans for our lives and the bible text for this series is taken from the book of jeremiah 29 verse 11 
Jeremiah 29 verse 11 and the Bible says Jeremiah 29 11 for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future I know the plans I have for you so God does have a plan for us and he knows the plan he has a plan he knows his plan now we have a part a very big part to play in that because the fact that God has a plan for us does not mean that it is what we happen unless we are prepared unless we want to take on that plan and follow it and make it what comes to pass in our lives and i pray only the counsel and plan of god will stand concerning each and every one of us in the mighty name of jesus Amen. so today the sixth um, session in this series we'll be looking at as we were told last week towards the end of last week's session that what we'll be looking at today is we must hear god you must hear god so following god's plan for our lives how to fulfill the plan of god make sure the how to make sure the plan of god is what is fulfilled in our lives but we must hear god to be able to fulfill the plan that he has the plan that god has and he knows for our lives so god has a plan he doesn't lie is he is not trying to cajole us when he says i i know the plan i have towards you it is the plan to do you good not a plan of evil a plan that means that you will have your expected end the end that you expect the glorious end that you desire is what i plan to give you too but in order for us to have that glorious end and to fulfill that plan that god has for us we must hear god we must be able to hear God so that we can fulfill the plan that he has for us. Amen. Amen. So hearing is part of an everyday process. Hearing is part of a process known as communication. And if we look at the Bible in the book of Isaiah 52, Isaiah chapter 52 verse 12. So hearing is not just a standalone concept. It is part of something. And part of what hearing is, is communication. If we look at the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 52, verse 12, and that will shed more light on it. So for everything that we do, that God has made, that we do, is not, none of it is, is an accident. God himself do them too. He does them. Isaiah 52, verse 12, says but you will not live in haste or go in flight for the lord will go before you the god of israel will be your rear guard you will not live in haste or go in flight for the lord will go before you the god of israel will be your rear guard so hearing hearing somebody listening to somebody is part of communication but we will not go unless we are led by god if we really want to fulfill the plan of god for our lives we must have a plan to never go in haste when it comes to making life decisions when it comes to making decisions that matter to our destinies and communication as we know it is a two-way process it will be it will be considered abnormal if somebody talks to themselves answer themselves people around them will start to look at them funny people around them will start to wonder whether they are still okay so communication is a, is, is a two-way thing is a two-way thing and this is evident in god's principles like i said earlier there is nothing that god has made that we his children do that he hasn't practiced or he doesn't do jeremiah 33 verse 3 we will see that even god does communication with us in two ways god is sovereign but he doesn't just talk to himself and give himself answers he wants to talk to us he speaks to us we speak to him 
So even our communication with God is still two ways, as it is with human that we can see. So we, in order for us to be able to fulfill God's plan for our lives, communication or hearing God or prayer is what we are looking at tonight. Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3 says, Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. So now, God is saying, I want you to reach out to me, talk to me, call to me. I mean, that is the beginning of every important conversation and communication. You want to say something important to somebody. The first thing you do is call them by their name so that they know that you need their attention. And God is saying, you are my child. You are my children. In order for you to fulfill my plan for your life, call out to me. Call me by my name. And God now says, I will not even let you call in vain. It's not a case of just call to me. You don't have to know whether I've heard or not. God says he will answer back. Call to me and I will answer you. And then he says, I will tell you. Now God says he will engage you in conversation. But the first move is for us to make. So now it is left for us to call out to God. The same way if we want to talk to somebody important, we call them. Oh, this person, can I have your attention? So God is saying, call my attention. Call me. I will answer you. And then I will engage you in serious conversation by telling you, I will tell you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. Now, you do not know it, but the one who knows it, like some people say, I don't know tomorrow, but I know the one who holds tomorrow. So we don't know tomorrow. This plan that God has, we don't, even if we have an idea, we don't necessarily know the full picture of it. But the one who has the, the, the plan, the one who made the plan, the one who has the power to fulfill the plan says, look, you want to fulfill my plan for your life. You need to communicate with me. Call to me. Call my name. Call my attention. I will look in your direction. I will answer you. And then I will give you time, engage you in conversation. I will speak to you. I will answer you. And then I will show you things that you do not know. Things that you may not know, that you will not know, unless you engage the one who holds the key, the one who made the plan. So, we want to fulfill the plan of God for our lives. It, it won't be possible if we choose to keep malice with God. If we choose to not call to him and speak to him and engage our father in heaven in conversation. So even God, our father, the creator of heaven and earth, makes conversation, two-way conversation important. And so it, it shows that fulfilling God's plan for our lives, communicating with God is a very important aspect of that. The Lord will help us in Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. Jeremiah 29 verse 12, just to buttress that same point that God values communication. God respects communication. Jeremiah 29, 12. It says, Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. It is just so assuring that God keeps saying, Look, call my attention. Come to me for conversation. Speak to me. I'm not going to ignore you. I will actually give you my attention. I will listen to you. I will speak to you in return. So hearing God, when we look at all these things, all these promises that God is making, it makes it, it assures us that hearing God is not hard. Unless we choose to ignore God, unless we choose to go out in haste. Hearing God happens. Hearing God is a real thing. Hearing God is a real process. And God is promising it that he will speak to us. He's not going to, to make us lack his voice. When we call to him, he will turn his attention to us and speak to us and show us things that we do not know. 
Job 22, 27, and that is still in line with the same point. God values communication. Communication with God is in two ways. Prayer is not a thing that we do and walk away. Prayer is a thing that we do and then God responds to us. God does respond to our call, to our prayer, to our cry out. Job 22, verse 27. Job chapter 22 and verse 27 says, You will pray to him and he will hear you and you will fulfill your vows. It is evident. It is clear. It is, we have been assured that when we communicate with God, he will turn to us and then he will, he will dialogue with us. He will give us his attention and he will talk to us. Now, I want to remind you that you cannot know the plan more than the planner. You cannot know the plan more than the originator of the plan. So even if God has shown you your glorious end, remember God showed Joseph his glorious end too, which led him to opening up and telling everybody, his father, his brothers, his siblings, all of them, how he's going to be great and they will be bowing down to him. Joseph did not know what lies ahead. He didn't know the process and the journey between the time that he had that dream and the time of the fulfillment of the dream. So even if you have seen what God has in store for you, if, if God has shown you a glimpse, remember we also see in parts. So he may have shown you a part of what he's about to do for you or what he's going to do for you in the future. It does not give you the guarantee that you can journey alone with ignoring the one who made the plan. We still need to constantly speak to the one who made the plan. So God may have shown you or he may not have shown you. But it is important now that we have to call on to God. We need to engage our father in heaven in conversation, in dialogue. We need, to look, we need to look to him. We need to hear from him. So prayer as children of God should not be what we just kneel down and do and then we get up and we go. It is, it is sad today that a lot of Christians, you know a lot of Christians pray, but when it comes to hearing God, they go to other Christians and say, what is God saying? Why is it that you believe that you can talk to God, but you don't believe that God can talk to you? And in actual fact, he speaks to all of his children. Maybe you just haven't taken that time to know how, in which method he speaks to you. Maybe you haven't worked it out yet. Maybe you, you, are, still, you are still lagging in, in recognizing his method of speaking to you and his voice. And if anyone is in that situation today, the Lord will make it clear to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You will hear the Lord clearly in the mighty name of Jesus Amen. and you'll be able to respond to him appropriately in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So we need to speak to God first in everything. Psalm 32 verse 8. Psalm 32 verse 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. So the, we have a journey ahead. The one who made the plan says is the is also the instructor. He's not only the planner, is the instructor. It's like when you are learning to drive. For some of us who have learned to drive, if you are put in a car for the first time and you ignore your instructor and you start to go, one may end up in a ditch or even was dead. God, who is the planner, says he's also the instructor. So he knows the plan and he wants to instruct us through that plan so that we can fulfill it. That is why we must speak to God every day on a daily basis. And that's why the Bible says, pray without season. Pray without season. Talk to God without season. And then also wait for his reply because he said it he said when you call on to me i will answer you and then i will talk to you and show you great and mighty things that you do not know it is obvious that we are constantly under pressure 
in life to move quickly. Like people will say, when the world is rotating and you don't rotate with it, people leave you behind. So in a lot of cases, we are constantly under pressure to move quickly. But how is it that we want to move and go above and go beyond our instructor? The one who is meant to instruct us is saying, speak to me so that I can instruct you. I can guide you through the ways that you should go. So no matter how much pressure you are under, no matter how much the world puts pressure on you today, I want to say, after you have prayed, take a moment to listen to. Because if you want to fulfill the plan of God for your life, you must hear him. You must hear God. So when the world pressurizes you to move, to keep going, to keep chasing, to go for the next best thing, please, as a child of God, always have it at the very important place in your heart to wait and hear God before taking steps. Psalm 25 verse 5. Don't move by pressure. Move by the instruction of God. Psalm 25 verse 5 says, Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are, you are God my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Isaiah 52 12 also says, Isaiah chapter 52 verse 12 says, But you will not live in haste, it, where we read earlier. So the world is pressurizing you to move and, and live in haste. Just leave the, the, the one you're doing. Go for the next one. This is where it's going good now. This is the, the next best thing. This is what everyone is doing at this moment. This is the best career for this decade. The Bible says you will not move in haste. You will not live in haste. Or go in flight. For the Lord will go before you. When we choose to go with the pressure. When we choose to, lead, to act on the pressure that the world is giving us. We are living ahead of God. The one that should go ahead. We are leaving him behind. That will not be our story in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody once said. If God told you to do something. And he has not given you a new instruction. Even if what he has told you to do does not seem to be doing well, continue to do the last thing he told you to do. The last thing you heard God say is what you should stick to until he gives you a new direction or a new instruction. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name to be patient in the name of Jesus. Amen. And somebody also said, we were having a conversation and this person said uh, that somebody raised it with them. Are you... The type of Christian who goes to God and says, God, this is what I like. This is what I want to do. Make it happen. Or the type of Christian that says, God, let your will be done. Is either, is, is one way or another. We are either the type of Christian that makes our plans in haste and just want to achieve and do it. It's, it's not bad to be driven. It is not sinful to be driven. But it is sinful to take steps before God leads. So are we, are we the type of Christians that presents our plan to God and say, God, here is the plan. Make it work. Make it happen. Or the type of Christian that say, God, I want to see your plan and I want to follow it. And what happens when we hear God? What are those things that happen when we choose to listen to God and hear him? He will be our rear guard. And he will also go ahead and strengthen our path. He will be your rear guard. And he will go ahead and strengthen your path. And what that means when God is your rear guard is that your past mistake, he will prevent your past mistake from coming to destroy your future. Because he's your rear guard. So every mess you have made is correcting as he's coming with you. And he will go ahead of you. So those things, the future that you do not know, he will make sure that the ground is prepared so that you don't go and fall into a ditch. So he's making the future great and he's correcting the past. And that is what God wants to be for us. That is who he wants to be for us. When we listen and hear God, he will be our rear guard and he will go ahead of us, straightening our paths before us. When we listen and hear God, 
It prevents us from making errors. When we listen for God's instruction, when we let the planner also be the instructor, it will prevent us from making errors that can destroy our lives and destinies. Proverbs 16, 19. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 19. When we hear God before taking step, it will prevent us from falling into errors that can ruin our destiny. Proverbs 16, verse 19. The Bible says, Better to be lowly in spirit and among the oppressed than to share plunder with the proud. Better to be lowly in spirit and among the oppressed than to share plunder with the proud. Whoever gives heed to instruction prospers, and blessed is he who trusts in the Lord. So verse 20 says, whoever gives heed to instruction prospers. Remember this God is the instructor, is the planner and is the instructor. So whoever gives their lives, who gives their hair, who, who, who listens to instruction and follow it, they are prevented from destruction. And blessed is he who trusts in the Lord. So when we hear God, it will prevent us from making errors that can ruin our lives and destiny. And sometimes, sometimes, and this is where it gets tricky, even for Christians, God can overrule your desire. So the next be best thing that you want, that thing that you really desire, it may not be part of his own plan. It may not. The Bible says not everything that is good is profitable. So even though it may be good, it may not profit us. It may not be of profit for our destiny or our future and even the kingdom of God. And when it is not profitable to us, the Lord may look to overrule it. And this is where it takes humbleness. This is where the totality comes in. And unless we have submitted to God in totality, it is, it is difficult when you want to go to A and the spirit of God in you is overruling it and telling you B is the plan. So when we listen to God, he may want to overrule our decisions and desires. And because this is, this is not because he's wicked. It's not because God is wicked and he just wants to show us who, who is the boss or who is in charge. No, because he's the director, he's the instructor, he's the planner. He knows it better than you and everything he does is for our own good. When we listen to God, when you are lost and you don't have answers, he will provide answers. The thing is, if you set out, if you go out in haste and you get lost, you go back to God. You won't expect the one who hasn't sent you to be providing you redirection and answers. But God is merciful. He will do. But in most cases, such person will suffer for their, for their hastiness and lack of patience. But when we wait upon him, we hear his voice before taking any step. Even when he gets tricky. Remember Joseph, as mentioned in the beginning. God showed him the end. He didn't know the in-between. But all true, he listened to God. He followed his voice. He did everything that God wanted him to do. So it got tricky. There were times he suffered for what he didn't even do. But at every step, even in his suffering, we could see the hand of God upon him. We could see God even, even in prison. This guy was made the leader of the prisoners. So when we hear God, when we listen to his voice and we follow his voice and do his directions, even when we get lost, when we don't have answers for our, for our life issues, he will provide answers. He will provide direction. He will provide guidance. Like the Bible says, God will not give you a problem that is too much for you to bear. And then the Bible says, in the midst of that problem, he will provide a way out. If you walk yourself into a problem, God will make sure you learn your lesson and find your way back. Such will suffer for no reason. But if we are acting on God's instruction, if we fall into problem, 
He will provide a way out because we are following him. We are not doing it by ourselves. And the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Psalm 32 verse 8. Just to buttress that. When you're lost and you don't have answers, as long as it is God's voice you are following, it will make a way for you. Psalm 32 verse 8. The Bible says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will cancel you. So when you don't have answer, like the book of Proverbs say, in, in cancel, we can win wars by cancel. So when you are in the midst of a war, God will provide counsel. He will guide you and cancel you and he will watch over you so that you don't fall into errors, so that you don't fall into problems. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. And when we listen to the voice of God and follow his voice, he will not let you fall. Psalm 37 Verse 23 to 24. Psalm 37, verse 23 to 24. The Bible says, If the Lord delights in a man's way, he makes his steps firm. If the Lord delights in a man's way, he makes his step firm. Though he stumbles, he will not fall. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. So if we have yielded our lives to the planner and then we let him also be the instructor, he is our rear guard and he's going ahead of us. We are surrounded in the journey of our lives. So when we get to where the floor is slippery, when we get to where life becomes tricky, because he's joining with us, he will hold your hand. Even when you stumble, you will not fall. So it means that life may not be all perfect at all times. But as long as you are living your life following the voice of Jesus and following his instruction, he will not let you crash and burn. It may be difficult sometimes. He will hold your hand and see you through the rough patches and the tough patches. And that is what it means. We want to fulfill the plans of God for our lives. We can simply not, we can't afford to live lives avoiding and ignoring the one who made the plan. We need to journey with the one who made the plan and let him also instruct it is like you buy, you, if you buy an equipment, an equipment with a manual, you didn't build it. You cannot just go to the shop and pick it up and expect that you will know how it works. You need to trust the wisdom of the people that built it by reading the manual that they wrote and put with it. And that is then how you know how to work it. It is the same. We want to fulfill the plan of God for our lives because whatever we may want to be in this life, Nothing supersedes the plan of God. Nothing is better. Nothing can be better than the plan of God for our lives. And in order for us to fulfill that which is best for our life, we need to listen to the one who made that plan. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. So when we listen to God and journey with him, he will not let us fall. In conclusion, how can you hear God? How can you hear God? Like I earlier said, a lot of Christians believe in screaming and shouting and praying. But they don't actually believe God that they, 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 they hold such a place. They are that important that God will speak to them. So when they desire direction, they still go to other people. It is not wrong to ask brethren to pray along with you sometimes. That is the purpose of fellowship. It is not wrong to look for guidance from trusted leaders in in the christian dom it is not wrong at all but what i'm saying is as a child of god if you don't think that god can ever speak to you then there's something wrong there are times that god will send his servants to you there are times that he will send brethren to you but if you are just the christian that prays but don't listen then such christian is making such a, is making a big error as you pray also listen. Pray, 
and listen. Because God says, call to me. I will hear you. And then I will speak to you and tell you great and unsearchable thing that you do not know. So God is saying, you are not only to pray, you are also to listen because I want to speak after you have prayed. I want to speak to you because you are my child. So how can you hear God? By prayer. Remember, communication is in two ways. So if you are praying and not listening, then you are doing communication with God wrong. As you pray to God, also listen to God. Proverbs 15, 29. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 29. The Bible says, The Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. If you are his child, he is hearing your prayers. And he's not going to ignore your voice because your voice matters to him. So he will send answers. And sometimes he may send it through his word. Sometimes he may send it through his servant. And sometimes he will send it through his spirit. But it is now left for you to be sensitive enough to listen to God. So you pray and you wait to receive. Because the Lord too wants to speak to you. Job 22:27. Job 22, 27, like we read, when you pray to God, he will hear you and you will fulfill your vows. So prayer, you pray. As we read in the book of Jeremiah, I think Isaiah, as we read earlier, that you call, when you call to me, I will hear you. So the first bit of that Bible verse is you call to me. That's your own bit. You do prayer. I will hear you. And then the second bit is, I will tell you, then listen. Proverbs 2, verse 1 to 5. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1 to 5. The Bible says, My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turning your hair to wisdom, turning your hair to wisdom, and applying your heart to understanding. So you listen. And you let the Spirit of God help you to understand. And if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. You can find the knowledge of God when you listen out, when you allow your heart to understand. Listen with your hair, allow your heart to understand, and then you will find the knowledge of God. I mean, if you have the knowledge of God, the creator of heaven and earth, do you need anything else? You have everything then. Another thing that we need to do to hear God is to prioritize his voice. Prioritize his voice. Many things speak, especially in this age of social media. A lot of voices are on social media. A lot of opinions, a lot of sayings, a lot of things that sound genuine, that sounds legal, that sounds holy even. But as a child of God who knows God's voice, you need to prioritize his voice. Your flesh will speak to you. Even Satan will speak to you. Brethren will speak to you. And sometimes they may not be speaking from the place of, of the Spirit of God. So there will be so many voices. It is now left to you to prioritize which one you put first. Which, whose advice matters most. A lot of Christians will go and take their family, mother, brother, sister, pastors, advice. And put that above what God is saying to them. If you want to fulfill God's plan for your life, you cannot put any other voice ahead of God's voice. It is like saying, I've bought this thing. It comes with a manual. But my two-year-old comes in and says, Ah, mommy, this is how you should do it. And then I follow and I follow the voice of that two years. I, I don't really have to look at the manual. How do I expect the, the, a child who has no knowledge of anything to know how to work it? Prioritize the voice of God over every other voice. 
And another thing you need to do is tune out other voices. Because even if you are choosing to prioritize the voice of God, if you don't tune out the voices that are not of God, they may eventually overpower you and you will listen to them. Prioritize God's voice. Tune out other voices so that you can give room, adequate room to the voice of God. Ezekiel 33 verse 30 to 32. The book of Ezekiel. 33, verse 30 to 32, it says, verse 30 to 32 says, As for you, son of man, your countrymen are talking together about you by the walls and at the doors of the houses, saying to each other, Come and hear the message that has come from the Lord. My people come to you as they usually do and sit before you to listen to your words. But they do not put them into practice. With their mouth, they express devotion. But their acts are greedy for unjust gain. Indeed, to them you are nothing more than one who sings love songs with a beautiful voice and plays an instrument. Well, for they hear your word, but do not put them in practice. Some, though some people hear the plan of God for their lives. But because somebody else is saying, ah, how can you choose that when you can actually do this and it will, it will bring you success in a short while. But because what God is saying does not sound as lucrative as what the other voice is saying. They hear, but they do not do. They follow man. Tune out other voices. Psalm 85 verse 8. Psalm 85 verse 8 says, Psalm 85 verse 8 says, Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger? Psalm 85 verse 8, I will listen to what God, the Lord, will say. He promises peace to his people, his saints, but let them not return to folly. When we choose to prioritize other voices over God's voice, that is foolishness. That is returning to folly. It is foolish to prioritize the voice of man over the voice of God. You want to hear God, you need to put his voice first. Luke 8, 18. Luke 8, verse 18. So if, it's, if, you, if you are convinced that what somebody is saying to you is not of God, you need to learn how to tune it out. You need to learn how to not let it move you. Luke chapter 8 verse 18 says, Luke 8, 18, the Bible says, Luke 8 chapter verse 18 says, Therefore, consider carefully how you listen. Therefore, consider carefully how you listen whoever has been given more whoever whoever has will be given more whoever does not have even what he thinks he has will be taken from him the first part is what i want us to take note of so even listening needs skill we need listening with the spirit of god if we listen to everything without considering them then we take everything in and that can be dangerous we need to consider carefully how we listen. And that is the part where we tune out what is not of God. That is, that is the part where we tune out what God is not saying. Finally, if you want to fulfill the plan of God for your life, you need to hear him, but you need to trust his voice. Because sometimes what God is saying, as I mentioned, may not even sound good it may not sound good to your to your flesh to your desire it may not sound good to your level to what you consider your level and your status i mean how do you how do you reconcile it when somebody has been sent to the university for years and they've studied from degree to masters from masters to phd from phd to other professional studies and all sort of certificates and then they finish and God says, I'm sending you to Elisha to become a pastor. 
I mean, how do you reconcile that? But that is where trusting his voice comes in. If you know his voice, you trust his voice. Even when you are being ridiculed, even when it looks like you are foolish, trust his voice. He will never lead you. He, God is never going to lead any of his children astray. He will never lead us astray. So in order to fulfill the promise of God for our lives, we need to hear him. And in order to hear him and be able to have positive impact of hearing him, we need to trust his voice. John 10, 27. John chapter 10, verse 27. That is the final point. You need to be able to trust the voice of God, the voice of the planner, the voice of the instructor. If you are being instructed to drive and you don't trust what your instructor is telling you, you drive it by yourself. And it's likely you drive yourself into a, to, into a dangerous place and the instructor in this case, which is human. But when we choose to not listen to the instructor in the case of God and man, it is that person that will suffer. God has nothing to lose. He has nothing to suffer. It is for us to trust the voice of God. Luke chapter 10 verse 27. It says, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. You know this thing is actually very true. I remember we went to a friend's farm and we, she was taking us to see the sheep. And she said, they were so far away, and she said, the sheep will not come to us. And we said, why? And she's, she's the wife, she's the co-owner of this farm. She said, they will not come to us because they only come to my husband. It's the only voice they know. And truly, they ran away from our voice, from all of us. She said, if this was my husband, they would actually come to him, but they will not come to me. So please trust the voice of God. You are a sheep. Follow his voice out of trust. Don't follow God's voice out of fear. Don't follow God's voice because you want to gain. Follow God's voice because you trust him, knowing that he will never lead you astray. And the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. If you are listening to us tonight or you are watching this and you've not given your life to Jesus, Jesus is man's greatest need jesus is man's greatest asset i i encourage you to take a step of faith and give your life to him you believe by hearing and you you you, you confess him and allow him to take ownership of your heart and as you take this step you will never regret it in the mighty name of jesus Amen. and for all of us those of us who are already in this journey who feel that we, we, we are wavering. Wherever we may be, I want us to pray and ask God for the grace, grace to obey him, grace to know his voice more than ever before, and grace to trust his voice, grace to tune out every other voice, grace to prioritize his voice. The Lord will give to us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And I pray that we will not live a life of vanity in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I pray that as we have come to this one life, we will fulfill our destinies in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We will fulfill the plans of God for our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. It is well with our spirit, souls, and body. Amen. Thank you, our heavenly Savior. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We give God all the glory. This is Divine Assembly Ministries. We are children of God who truly believe in his word. And we believe that our destinies are in the hand of God, the only one who is able to help us fulfill it. If you are unchurched and you are close to where we worship, kindly come and fellowship and worship with us and the Lord will bless us in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank God and we bring greetings from Pastor Akin Yemi who is not able to be here tonight. And if Christ tarries, we pray that we will see you again same time next week on Friday in the name of Jesus. If you are a Yoruba speaker, please meet us on Tuesday for Yoruba prayer. And as we pray, we will not pray in vain. Have a good night. The Lord bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.